joined by Raquel Hernandez, the CEO and original founder of Revivacell Biotech, Revivacell Therapeutics, and Warrior and the Warrior Vitality Foundation. Raquel, thank you for joining me today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. So it's an honor to have you on. Uh, you're a big sponsor of Team La Perla Boxing and MMA. Um, look forward today to sharing your story. Um, you're not inside the ring per se, but you you obviously help us in many ways. Um, you also help many of those in your community. So Revivacell is located in Ontario, California. Let's uh, talk about kind of how this came all about um, as far as the process of Revivacell. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, it's, it originated with uh, Revive Cell Biotech. So, it originally, I was supplying um, the hospitals, surgery centers, um, doctors all throughout the United States and in other countries. And uh, the company just took off. And what happened was uh, we already had plans to do the therapeutic side of it. But when COVID hit, um, we just got hit up directly. Like people wanted it and the, the industry just wasn't supplying it. And so people started reaching out to us directly. So because we were interconnected with the, the veterans and um, having EMT paramedics, um, we used them and actually uh, sent them out um, to the different states and then use our medical directors to actually open up our therapeutic side of it. So it's actually in all 50 states. Um, that we are able to to do the therapeutic side. And, of course, we did um, the first one was with a team of Perla. They were the first ones that reached out to us, um, and the guys wanted stem cell therapy. So it was like our first uh, therapeutic clinic. So essentially you've gone from being headquartered in one location, you have your laboratory in Southern California, you've gone mobile with stem cells and, and – Talk to me, I guess, about the whole process of that. A lot of people think stem cells and they think, what the heck is that? Or they, they've heard maybe some negativity attached to it. So if we could learn more about right. what stem cells are and kind of how that process sure. goes. Yeah, for sure. Um, so stem cells has been around for, you know, really the research of it more than 30 years. And originally they were uh, like a, put this in in terms where others can understand but pretty much what they were doing was they were taking the bone marrow very abrasive they're taking it from the bone and they're spinning the blood separating the stem cells from that and then injecting it back in but what researchers found out was that you're taking your same age cells so you're still putting in the same age back in and so if you have, you know, 70-year-old stem cells, 50-year-old stem cells, 40-year-old, you're still putting the same age back in, whether it's condensed or not. So that didn't really work out the, be the best. And then um, they started uh, taking from the fetuses, which is obviously very controversial, um, something that I was advocating against. Um, we didn't want to push and advocate for abortion so that we could get that blood. Um, I thought that was very um, ethically, you know, there was a problem with it. So um, what we did was we partnered up, we get our, our stem cells donated. So we just get them from the umbilical cords. Um, and because they have to be picked up by a certain time, time frame, um, like within hours, we got to pick them up from a donated scheduled C-section. And then the mom's got to go through like this rigorous process to see if she even qualifies. They got to go through serology, blood testing. Uh, make sure that the, the mom who's donating doesn't have any diseases in our blood. It's about 14 different diseases. They even did during COVID the test to see if the mom was going to pass COVID down to the baby, which um, it doesn't. So, um, so yeah, it's pretty much uh, the process on um, the, the cord blood that we get. And then it's minimally manipulated. So, Everybody always says, like, well, what's the difference between your stem cells and somebody else's stem cells? Really, there shouldn't be a difference because the FDA, what the FDA does is um, they regulate. It's got to be minimally manipulated. So if they're doing what they're supposed to be doing, there should be no manipulation. So they should be taking out the RNA, the DNA, and that's it. Like, it should be minimally manipulated. They shouldn't be adding in stuff and all that. It's very interesting stuff. So as far as the process of going 
using the umbilical cord and, and getting the actual stem cells through that, going through that way, how did you come about that per se? Because obviously there's a lot of controversy um, getting it from the baby's fetus and, and there's a lot of negativity around that. That sounds like you guys are kind of pioneering a whole new uh, way of acquiring um, the stem cells. Yeah, so it's a, it's a little crazy. My background is, is, is a little unique. So I came from the Air Force and then after when I came out of the Air Force, I actually went straight into um, the Sheriff's Department. I started um, interning there and I pretty much made my own position there um, because I said I wanted to I wanted to work in the medical there, but I also wanted to work in their detective bureau. So um, the I worked for Alley County Sheriff's Department um, Walmart station and they brought me on board and and just try, straight brought me to the back end. My whole thing was I wanted to fight trafficking. So I wanted to fight human trafficking. Um, and with that, I seen that organ trafficking was a big deal. Um, they were trafficking organs, and then they were also trafficking um, uh, fetuses. You know, Planned Parenthood got caught straight out um, selling fetuses. And so, um, and it was for this purpose. So actually, it's like, it's a big drug. It was a big drug on the, on the black market, on the deep web. And um, so I wanted to actually um, take that that black market sale, so to speak, out, out of the picture. It's kind of like when they legalized marijuana, it wasn't coming through the border anymore. I wanted to do the same thing. I wanted to make it a medicine. People wanted it, the leap for using it. Um, and I wanted to make it available um, for, for where everybody can afford it, everyone can use it and in an ethical way. It's very interesting that you say that. So accessibility to the stem cells and that process, how accessible is this for the average person? So I've made it, our company has made it very accessible. Um, we will allow them to purchase the product and take it to their doctor and we'll train their doctor and form their doctor. See, I think what's going on right now in the industry is there's still a lot of physicians that are uninformed on what cord blood is. And a lot of them are just uh, looking over the fence right now We've trained the doctors, so um, some of them that, that are interested on it, they don't even have access to it right now. It's just so expensive. Um, they can't really get it from a manufacturer. It's very difficult to even find a supplier right now. Um, that's not going to um, charge them thousands of dollars per CC for it. So we gave it at you know, wholesale pricing, and we, we want it to ultimately to, to be very affordable to a patient. So we actually list their prices online. You can book book a treatment. Um, it's still, you know, fairly expensive, but compared to what everybody else on the market is um, selling it for, it's pretty it's pretty cheap, you know. Yeah, I was reading on your website the commercialization of of the stem cells and the innovative products. If you could talk to us about that more in detail, I was I was yeah. looking at it and sure, I'm like, wow, absolutely. this is pretty unique. So yeah, so it's like, you know, to somebody that doesn't really understand it, because we, we also have our, our viewers and stuff, our followers that are doctors and scientists and um, people in the industry that they want the scientific um, description of it, but then they're, you're dealing with average citizens that they don't understand certain things like what a pluripotent cell is and, and what stem cells are. So actually, before I go into the different products, I'm just going to explain some a, a little bit about the, what the stem cells actually are. So they're age zero cells, obviously. We get them from the newborn. They haven't touched the baby. We get it from the cord. And we actually, um, we take a couple different products out of there. There's an artery in there. It's called the Wharton's artery. And we will take product from there. That's the Wharton's jelly um, product that um, is well known in the industry. And it's also known as the mesenchymal stem cells. It's a tissue-based product. Um, and it's primarily used um, in, in who we supply, the institute that we do supply, it's primarily used for orthopedic use. So we'll, it'll be used for like in the joint um, or it'll be used uh, topically. It can be used by IV, but the problem is that some doctors don't understand this, is that there's um, tiny, tiny little micro vessels that go into the brain and about 3% when you do it by IV will go past the brain barrier. You want it to go there to, to um, rejuvenate the brain and then also, um, especially for our fighters, to rejuvenate any PTSD or, um, you know, a traumatic brain injury. 
So we want it to get into all those micro vegetables, which is why I like using um, the cord blood stem cell, which is fluid based versus the tissue based, because when you see it going on a microscopic level, it's not going to go all the way to the fullest extent of those micro vessels. It'll get stuck and it won't um, create a blood clot or anything like that, but it'll, it definitely will not um, give you the same results. Um, so even though it has the so-called, you know, the best stem cell of it all, um, I have some doctors that will combine it. You know, everybody's kind of researching right now what are the best methods. Now, because we do supply doctors, um, we get to see what works and what doesn't work. And um, we're on the cutting edge of, of finding out, you know, um, what works best, so to speak. So in that, we have the Wharton's Jelly Artery, which is, a, a, you know, Wharton's Jelly um, product. It's a stem cell product, and it's a primarily condensed of those mesenchymal cells. So they're pluripotent, meaning... Pluripotent means that they they don't know what they are yet until they're put into you. So you can put it into a joint and it can regrow your meniscus. It can regrow bone. It it can it can pretty much become a heart cell. Uh, over 220 different cell types is what we're talking about here. Um, so some people that said you know what I need transplant. Um, you know my kidneys are shot. We can actually rejuvenate um, that organ. Um, and I've just seen some amazing stuff, honestly. Some of, you know, your fighters. Yeah, it sounds very extensive, and it sounds exciting. Really, with all the different research you're doing and the impact you can have, especially on an athlete's career, talk to us more about the athletes you've worked with as well as the impact you've had in a short period of time. Yeah, so a lot of people will ask the question like, "How did you? How did you get so well connected? And how did you just, you know, how did you get in with the in crowd?" And really, um, it was a blessing by God. Um, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. My main goal was to change healthcare and the standard of care. I really wanted, um, you know, I, I wanted to release some tears. That was like my biggest thing. Is like, if there's tears out there we got to do the studies and we got to release them and we got to do it quick because things are moving really slow in healthcare and, um, and it's just not, it's not getting released. So I opened up the 501 C3, my nonprofit, and I have yet to do any foundation um, collecting on it. I don't um, really publicize it, but I wanted to um, give uh, 10% of my sales, my personal sales out of my pocket. I wanted to give it back to, um, to our soldiers. So I was actually giving out free stem cell therapy, and I still am. We just kind of stopped it over COVID. Um, and pretty much I was donating it to him. I wanted the worst cases brought at me, the people that had nothing else to lose. And um, the, the results were just amazing with their TBI. Um, and, of course, these guys were, like, SEAL Team 6 soldiers, Benghazi soldiers. Um, you know, um, we had uh, Travis Wilson. He's the ambassador of the Green Brave Foundation. He actually referred me over so many guys, and we didn't charge them a dime. We just had them fly down, and we um, treated them. And I was just so happy with the results that they were having. They referred us uh, some some people. They're well connected, and they referred us some people. We we um, treated Angela Magana, and she was one of the people that came down. He said, "Hey, you know, she's not she's not a, a war veteran, but um, you know, she's a UFC fighter, and she's pretty pretty damaged right now. You know." Will you will you treat her? I said absolutely. So I hadn't met Angela. I barely talked to her. I think it was like the day before she had her therapy, and um, you know I just called her to confirm, and she said, "Yeah, I'll be there." She was very short. We didn't really talk much, and um, and then she had to take pain meds to actually fly down to get her therapy, and then she flew back home, and then it was like the next. It was like two weekends. I don't know. It was like some short time, ridiculous time. She calls me up like just super excited. It was like probably a week later. And she's like, you know, I'm walking around. I'm walking my pen meds. But I didn't really grasp how bad she was. You know, the people around her, the spiders around her and everybody around her um, and her significant other Gabriel, they knew how bad she was. And so for me, I was like, I hear these stories and I just didn't really know her personally to know how bad it really was. Um, but she's like, I'm off all my pain meds. Like, I'm sleeping good. She's like, my pain is gone. I'm going back to fighting. 
And I was just kind of tripping out about that. I was like, oh, okay. And most of these other guys that we treat, they, they weren't like, they hadn't fallen off of a four story building like Angela did. So her story was pretty intense. Um, and, you know, sure, her whole career was done. Her, her fighting career was done. You know, she's ex UFC fighter. She was tying with Mbappe, but she, she was on meds, you know, she was bed bound. From what I hear, you know, she wasn't really getting up much. And, um, and so, yeah, that was like one of, one of the most impactful stories. Um, because then she invited me to Vegas, um, for a human trafficking gala that I was like, so down to go, go for. And, um, she was like walking up and down the strip, like nothing like a normal person. And she was like, you don't understand. She's like, not only that, but my vision, she's like, I could read the Starbucks menu. I can never do it. It was like, everything was like new for her. She was just on fire. Yeah, it's truly amazing. Remember Angela, and less than a year, a little over a year ago, was coming out of a, a coma. There was complications with a with yeah. surgery, and, and at that point, it was looking very like a dire situation, and the career could be over. So talk about Revive a Cell. <laughs> Raquel, you, you yeah, saved, you I saved mean, her, it was, her career. Uh, it was crazy, man. I mean, and then it's not even only that, but it's like um, I brought her down here to uh, California, and she was – she wanted to go to the gym. She took me to the gym. So we went to the gym. I said, yeah, I'll go with you to the gym. She was already pushing weight. And I'm like, no, don't do nothing. Because I was so scared. <laughs> Just take it easy. She's like, no, I'm going back to fighting. She's like, I I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fight again. So, um, you know, fast forward to now. She's like, you know, she just got signed for a pro boxing contract. And um, I just... I'm just, I'm speechless. Honestly, it's like people call me up and they tell me the results with their, even, even the soldiers um, that have like really bad PTSD, they're waking up with these nightmares and for them to call me up and say, Hey, I'm not having any more nightmares. I'm not depressed anymore. I'm off my pain meds. You know, I didn't even have to take anything to get off of all the pain medication I was taking. I had zero withdrawals. Um, people are sleeping at night. Their hot flashes are gone. I mean, it does a lot of other things that we don't really necessarily brief patients on, you know, like uh, we might not be doing it for their vision, but, you know, their vision goes good, their hair starts growing out, the collagen comes back, and I just, on average, I get text messages saying I've lost, like, about 10 years from my life, so it's not, you know, it's, they're almost things that you don't want to talk about, because people, people start saying that it's snake oil, you know? It's just, it's crazy, though. It's crazy stuff. It's aged girl cells going in your body, repairing, going straight to your problematic areas. So for a fighter that for sure got some TBI going on, um, you know, we look at that, that story of Aaron Hernandez, a football player, and how his brain shrunk and the TBI. And it's like we have, you know, the, the NFL teams and stuff like that. They're interested in, on this stuff. You know, we got sports doctors now that, that they need this for the players and stuff like that. Yeah, it's, so that, that's, I do. That's Go ahead. Cutting edge, excuse me, that's cutting edge technology moving forward into the sports world. Not only are you helping, you know, with the Warrior Vitality Foundation project that you spoke about in, in helping um, veterans, yourself being a veteran, and I commend you for that and thank you for your service, but you're truly making a thank difference. Um, not only, like we said, working with uh, veterans, but going now into football. I mean, that's in boxers that are taking uh, severe uh, damage to the brain. I wanted to circle back and talk about, you said hair growth. I mean, we're talking about a bald guy myself. I wish I would have met you a few years back. <laughs> um, but on a serious note, moving with cancer patients, how does this work um, with those that have cancer? Are you able to interact with them in regards? How, how does that process work? Yeah, so, you know, it's a very touchy subject um, because, then I get all the regular, like the regulatory people on, on my butt. But really what it is, is uh, there's been enough studies. Okay. So like those, those people out there that say there's not enough studies, we think it's going to grow the tumors. The studies are there. You can go to clinicaltrials.gov and it shows that it's safe. These types of stem cells that we're using, they don't have the capability of growing tumors. Um, we personally, we treat cancer patients. We take the ones that are terminal that they send home to die. Okay, those are the patients that we get referred, and um, we see their, their, I'm talking about, they got it everywhere, they're terminal, they could barely walk, we have to go to them because they can't even drive, 
they can't eat. They haven't grown their hair out for two years. We're talking people that have just been chemoed out and can't take another round of chemo. So they send them home. There is no other option for them. So um, they typically, they got to go through multiple rounds. So they got a, a fundraise on, uh, um, you know, these GoFundMe apps. And um, and so they'll, some of them will come with like, you know, 20000 Some will come with 10000 And I take whatever they got and I try to donate what I can so that they can get to the point where their body is in, in a healing good environment and that their organs repair. They no longer have kidney failure, uh, liver failure. They're, they go back, they get tested, their markers are with the normal. Okay. Um, the only thing that is really tricky, and I will tell you this, is, and, and it confuses the doctors because when we work with the oncologists and stuff like that, um, hand in hand, you got some oncologists that they've never seen anything like this before. So for them, they don't believe it if it's not FDA approved, right? So um, what we just noticed is that it throws off the cancer marker. And, and so typically, say they'll be at like terminally ill, like what's at a 400 cancer marker. Um, and then all of a sudden they go back, they get tested and their markers at like 1700. It's like tripled. It's because the markers are so similar to the stem cell marker that they can't see the difference in there. So it, it's not going to be a normal um, cancer marker for over a year because the stem cells keep producing. Every 18 hours, you're, rege you're rejuvenating up to a year. Those stem cells are, are repopulating and, and fixing you for up to a year. So those numbers are not going to be um, accurate, but you do see life. The patients, um, they won't go back to chemo after getting on stem cell therapy. Um, and it's, it's uh, draining, not because they're getting life, but because then they go back and they work with their oncologist. Some who are coming over on this side, we got some oncologist nurses that are coming over and some doctors that we're working with. Um, we worked out of a mission hospital and, and you know, they're, they're really, they're really happy to, to work with us. City of Hope's really happy. We got some local hospitals nearby. We, we supply a couple institutes, um, you know, Los Angeles Stem Cell Institute, New York Stem Cell Institute, a couple of pro um, NFL doctors. Um, we got our medical director, who is a pro AFC doctor. Um, and we work with top scientists that actually built out the uh, Panama Stem Cell Institute. So um, we've kind of built, built our credibility. And, um, yeah, so we train doctors and we try to um, – let the doctors know where the research is at, but um, how the reason why, and I just want to let the viewers know this, the reason why it's so hard to get into hospitals and they say, well, why isn't the insurance covering this if it works? And why, why doesn't my doctors at, you know, talk if you're working with them or, um, you know, out of City of Hope, why don't they know what's going on right, right now? How it works is um, by, the biotech industry supplies the hospitals. Okay, the hospitals don't come up with their own protocols and regimens. Regulatory has to do a clinical, um, an IRB and an IND on it to show that it's safe within their network. And then the regulatory folks at the hospital have to implement in those protocols before they can they can do it. So if you're talking, it's costing millions of dollars for um, for this to be implemented in in a hospital. Okay, and there's not enough funding for it. So who's going to pay for it? So I can get into any hospital really right now, over 200 hospitals that will say, yes, you can, you can implement this in, but you're going to have to pay for it. So, so, and, and, and not only that, but then you got the regulatory folks that are in between that want to make a cut out of it. And you have a lot of middlemen that are in there that, that, Hey, I got connections in the hospital. I'm going to bring you in, but I'm going to take 40%. I'm going to take 50% from you. So just recently, there was some um, some laws that just got passed about cutting out that middleman. And it's huge. It was huge. It was a huge thing for us because we were able to just pretty much tell those middlemen, like, step aside. You you don't, because at the end of the day, all we care about is getting it to the patient. And we're not able to get it to the patient because there's so many people. Polit politics. It's pure politics that gets in the middle of everything right now. Um you know, there was like a, a emergency FDA trial that we got for COVID. Um, and then all of a sudden, you know, you've seen folks like uh, Rudy Giuliani and stuff like that, that were pushing other stem cell companies that were backed by big companies like Facebook, 
um, you know, these big billionaires that were pushing in for it to get um, pushed through. As soon as it, it, it gets into um, legislators' pockets, it gets pushed through. But the problem is that there's payouts in the back end, right? So this is why it's so hard to fight big pharma because us little people, um, you know, and I'm considered a, a little person, even though it's a billion-dollar industry, um, and there's very few of us. There's very few of us, like, in, in we're highly FDA regulated, and there's very few of us um, that can supply the industry. Matter of fact, um, it is going to get there. It's not saying that it's not going to get there. It is going to get there. And a matter of fact, Medicare um, just put something out that uh, they're going to approve it. So as soon as uh, Medicare approves stem cell therapy for, you know, cl- uh, terminally ill patients, it's done. The whole, every, all the other insurances follow. That's just typically how it goes. Medicare is the hardest one. So um, we already got the note with that. So we're not ready to, to handle it yet. The industry is not ready for it yet. Um, you know, and that's, I think that's going to be the, one of the biggest uh, hurdles for us is to be able to have enough contracts to pick up enough cords, to process enough and ramp up for treating American uh, population because we're a sick population, you know. Um, we we don't get taught early on in education that um, how to fix our pH levels, which is everything to do with a disease produced environment. You know, if we can just, uh, you know, we're walking fish tank. I always tell people that um, we're ninety eight percent water. You know, you get your pH off, you get fungus in the water, it goes everywhere. It's the same exact thing. And, when we in biotech look at stuff under a microscope, it's all fungus to us. Cancer is a fungus, um, arthritis is a fungus, and a lot of these diseases are funguses. So um, that in itself can help people a lot by um, just fixing their pH. And it's not with um, pH water, by the way. A lot of people, a lot of fighters, a lot of people think they're doing the right thing by right. drinking pH water. And your stomach is super acidic, man. Like you're pouring high pH into an acidic area and you're playing mad scientists and your body's just counteracting and producing more out. acidity so they actually actually sell these drops on amazon it's called cell power it's not my company um but the, the drops work and you put them in your in your water and honestly um i think they're like 35 bucks for a two ounce bottle put it in your water it tastes like lemon and it actually regulates your ph and you can test them with a little ph strip and that in itself, if they could just teach that in itself, we would have a lot less sick people because they wouldn't be in that disease-producing environment to even produce the cancer. It can't exist in that environment. Wow. So that's huge. Yeah, and you say yeah. walking fish tank. I love the analogy. I'm going to use that one moving forward. Honestly, for sure, we're definitely going to get you on. We're building a website. I'm going to plug us now at TeamLaPerla.com. We're not... We're not live yet, but we're going to do more focusing on health. We, we talk about um, healthy living habits, and we want to bring more of that to the page as well as to our nonprofit. And I can't wait to work with you in regards to that, just to, to have stuff on there. I mean, like you said, the environment that we grow up in, we're not, we're not even talking about before we get to pH levels and, and, and the higher, more intense um, you know, science, science information, so to say, that we're not even – talk that's not even talked about just healthy eating i mean that's a start at square one we're talking about the next level so i I look forward to to working with you raquel and and getting more of this information out you beat me to my question in regards to accessibility um and what is the hold up i mean how do we not know about revivasa like this is this is major stuff and uh it's truly a blessing to have it's very man eddie it's so hidden it, it, it amazes me, you know, it's like, right. um, you know, we supply top, top doctors. I'm talking about top doctors, you know, um, they supply the, you know, the U of C uh, Institute, they supply, you know, like top celebrities. And um, every now and then someone will get a glimpse of our box, our, our boxes, you know, that the stem cells come in, they're pretty branded out really nice. And every now and then someone will get a glimpse of the company and then they'll contact us directly. But what happens is, the doctors don't want, they want to charge you 30000 50000 for these treatments. And um, and now you're starting to get some, some doctors that really care about their patients and are saying, you know what, let's cover our costs, but let's make it affordable. Let's make an ejection, you know, like 2000 2500 Let's do a full-on, you know, full-on therapy for somebody for like 7500 versus, you know, this 
thirty thousand dollars stuff and um until we can get the insurance to pay for it which i think is like right around the corner but we do have um a lot of our our silent majority that are stepping up right now you know it was like the, it, it, the country is divided and it's not just divided politically but it's also divided um on health care you got um the frontline doctors who are well uh credible doctors that were standing in front of the Capitol just recently and you know we're all advocating for natural stuff um kind of similar to like what i was talking about and now they have the capability of running these vitamins by iv you know like zinc and um, vitamin c which has this chemical reaction and to turning into hydroperoxide and so i mean it's just like all the b12s and all this stuff like we have the capability now of of doing it much easier um and faster and and changing the ph by iv versus somebody taking three months to do it we have the capability now where um you know, just to kind of skip forward, there's a lot of people on insulin on uh, type 2 diabetes, and we treat those patients, and some of them have came off of insulin, and they just have been told their whole life that it's uncurable, and we're treating them, and, you know, we don't treat them with the intent to take them off the insulin. We treat them with the intent um, for organ, um, you know, organ failure and, and stuff like that to rejuvenate their organs, um, and they just call us up and say, hey, I'm off my insulin, and I'm doing really well. And so we get doctors that start, um, their doctors will call us up and say, you know, I want to know a little bit more about this. And so I just feel like uh, the division comes from one set of doctors that are doing Western medicine, which there's a part of Western medicine that's needed. You know, we need imaging, we need testing, we need diagnostics. But I think um, as far as available treatment options, there's a lot more options now versus what Big Pharma has just been pushing all these years of making money. And I think that they're fighting really hard for our industry to be suppressed and trying to turn it into a drug, um, forcing us to turn things into a drug that are biologic, um, that I just feel that are um, ridiculous uh, towards the human population. They deserve this. And um, and I've been a, a, a very outspoken advocate on this. And, and this is really the first time I, I think that I'm coming forward and speaking publicly because I have been pushed in such the background setting um, that, you know, we didn't have the platform. We had to create the therapeutic side to have the platform because um, the, our doctors were either too scared to speak up. Um, and I think during COVID, it just really lit the fire under their butts where they're starting to speak up. And that's where really where they became divided. And for we are rejoined by Raquel Hernandez, CEO and original founder of Revive Cell Biotech and Revive Cell Therapeutics, as well as the Warrior Vitality Foundation. So, hello, we're back. <laughs> <laughs> so, Raquel, as we were wrapping up, I wanted you to take the time and, and discuss who Raquel Hernandez is outside of the ring, as we say when we talk to fighters. Um, so, who's Raquel Hernandez outside of her Revive Cell leadership role? Absolutely. Um, so I was, uh, I'm born and raised out of California. Um, I have traveled a lot, you know, um, just, I guess the military had opened me up. So I traveled a lot, um, which is why I guess I wasn't afraid to do business, you know, in, in all the different states. Um, but I guess when I was younger, I, I wasn't um, born with opportunity. Um, I don't, in fact, I don't think anybody in my family had even gotten a college degree or really finished college. Um, we grew up on rice and beans. Um, some of our family had migrated to California. And so they were very hard working. That was something that I did learn from my family. Um, my dad didn't miss work um, if he was sick. And my mom, she hustled a lot too. And so, um, so I definitely learned that. And then um, when I went to high school, I kind of moved high school and went to another city, um, go away from my friends. And so I just wanted to get super involved in school. I was super involved in ASB and like cheerleading and, and stuff like that. And so um, when I came out, I kind of was like looking around me in the city of South Omani that I didn't really know too many people from there. And uh, I didn't want to be there. That's what I did know. I, I just said, I don't want to get stuck here. I don't want to be here. Um, and for some reason, it just nobody, nobody really pushed me towards it because my dad was an ex-Marine. He didn't want me to join the military. 
I'll never forget the day that I told him I was going. He slammed the door on me. He was like, you're not going. And, um, and I was like, I just, it was stuck in me that I wanted to go to the military. And I just felt like it was going to bring different opportunities for me. And so I joined, uh, joined the Air Force. And from that on now until I'm 36, you know, it's just been like, I can't stay still. You know, that's, that's who I am. That's what I do. Um, I like to work, even though I say I don't like to. I love to work because um, I will work seven days a week. And it's been like that for, for a long time. Of course, now I have staff, so my, my work is a lot funner now. Um, I think post, I, I would say before COVID, I was traveling a lot, maybe like two, three times a week. I was flying a lot down to Dallas. I love Texas. Um, and I was doing a lot of like business meetings, collaborating, um, meeting up with scientists. And that was, to me, that's like fun. So my, my friends are all business partners. Um, I strongly believe that you have to surround yourself around people um, that are like-minded. And so that's what I did. I surrounded myself with some uh, very well-accomplished people and um, people that I wasn't going to feel uncomfortable around talking about my great ambitions, people that weren't going to make me feel uncomfortable or put me down. And um, that's what I ran with. I, I, love, uh, I love sports. So I traveled to some uh, football games. We're a Green Bay fan. And um, we traveled down there to Wisconsin um, with some of my doctors. And, and yeah, I mean, I, I, have, I have a family. So, too, like I try to get home by like 4 or 5 o'clock every day so I could be with my three girls. I got three girls. And um, they're homeschooled, too. So my family all takes turns homeschooling them. Wow. So, so you, you're very busy on, on both sides, not only as the CEO of Revive a Cell, but you have your hands full at home. We truly commend you. And as you move forward, I, I wanted to circle back. As you move forward with Revive a Cell, we talk about youth a lot at Team La Perla Boxing and MMA. With the stem cells, in regards to children that are born with certain deficiencies, or, you know, it could be, you, I saw the other day you helped a girl that had a lazy eye. You were able to, uh, essentially, the eye was no longer a lazy eye, cons considered in medical terms. So talk to us about, I, I want to talk more about the process of stem cells with youth. Yeah, actually, um, that was actually my daughter. That's my oldest daughter uh, three years ago. That's my, okay. uh, that was my daughter, Mariah. She's now going on 14. And, um, and after seeing it on so many patients, I wanted to try it on my daughter. Um, she, she was born actually with some uh, congenital cataracts. And she has these bright, blue, beautiful eyes. And um, when she was three, she actually went blind in one of them. And it was uh, from some vaccinations. And so um, she just got vaccinated, went blind. She ended up at Chalk, the Children's Hospital of Orange County. And they thought they'd seen a tumor. And uh, apparently, you know, it was some type of miracle. And um, we got released. She and they ended up just taking out one cataract. And, um, and when the brain is young, what happens is the brain just says there's too much trauma. Like, this is too much for, for a little kid. So it turns off the neuroreceptor. It'll just turn off the, uh, the brain using the eye. So that's how you get the wandering eye. And it's hard. So what they do is they, they typically will patch the good eye and force the brain to use the bad eye. And patching, you know, um, isn't the best the best thing to use, but that's what the industry, that's all they have. Otherwise, you got to go in and do a surgical procedure to pull the muscle tight, to pull the eye in. And so I didn't really want to do that. Um, and I ended up... Um, yeah, I ended up uh, injecting two CCs at one of our surgery centers into her. And uh, within 24 hours, I mean, she took off her bifocal. She wore these massive bifocals. My whole family would see her in. And she couldn't, I mean, from the moment she would wake up, she would have to grab them. That's how much she couldn't see. She couldn't see anything close up. And um, within 24 hours, she took off her glasses and her, her eye stood like that and never went back. We never got lazy again. That's amazing. This message of Revive yeah. a Cell needs to continue to get out. It needs to continue to be shared that you guys are truly making a difference in people's lives and in many different facets in the medical field. So it's truly an honor to have you on today sharing your story, as we say, inside and outside of the ring. We'll say inside and outside of the medical field. 
Um, it's truly been an honor. Like I said, Raquel, thank you so much for your time. I would like to wrap up and allow you to share a message to everyone out there um, from your heart, from Revive a Cell. What would you like to say to the viewers? Absolutely. I think it's like my reason of coming on, and um, I do have a message, and it's that there is alternative options out there. Um, we do have the studies to show that, that stem cells are safe that they're effective and that they can give you a better quality of life. We can't promise you specific results, but everybody's had positive results and it's shown to be safe. And um, there is options out there that are affordable. And, um, you know, we're out here, we're, we're about to donate and raffle off a free um, stem cell therapy. So if you guys go follow um, on Instagram at Revive a Cell. And then we have our, um, our therapeutics website, which I'm sure Eddie's going to be sharing uh, with you guys, our biotech for supply. If you guys are um, providers, we'll have, um, you know, we do supply stem cells and in, into different networks. And then also our link for our therapeutics, if you guys are interested in stem cell therapy. And then also our Warrior Vitality Foundation link, in case you guys are uh, veterans or active duty, um, so you guys can get on the list, so you guys can get treated. And, um, and that's, and that's really my my thing you guys are going to um, see this come to fruition you're going to see it come um, through the um, medical network soon you're going to see it in every sector for every problem you could possibly imagine from the beauty aspect of it down to um, you know I have wounds and I have burns and you know I need it topically or I need my vision to get better or I need organ repair or I have diseases um, we're treating everything with that and we specifically may not treat everything like we don't personally inject it into the spines on the mobile ther therapies but um, it was like something similar like Angela she um, she had like pinched discs and a lot of it was due to inflammation so when we injected by IV her her pinched disc went away so we have seen that multiple times um, with some of our troops and um, pretty much, you know, there's hope out there. There's hope. Things are going to change. They're going to change very soon. And you're going to start to see just uh, therapeutics and um, change in, in its whole nature. A doctor's office, everything's going to change after um, becoming this end of the year, beginning of next year. You're going to start seeing a lot of these um, locations popping up and, and healthcare changing. I'm excited. We look forward to seeing you and Revive Yourself continue to grow and expand and make a difference, not only in the community, but around the world. Thank you again, Raquel thank Hernandez. Thank you, Eddie. We appreciate you sharing thank your you story Thank you to Team today. La Perla. Thank you. Uh, thank you to Team La Perla, um, especially, you know, you guys are always supporting us and, and pushing us out there and getting the word out. Um, and I really appreciate that. I always. Thank you guys. It's truly an honor, and we thank you for your support of the team. Uh, TeamLaparela.com will be out going live soon, so we can't wait. And we're going to add a, a, our health page, and it, you guys are going to be a big part of that, and we can't wait. So thank you so much. Beautiful. Again, Raquel. Thank and, you. Uh, take care. Thank you. You too.